What is up everyone? Today I'd like to talk to you about a relatively obscure PlayStation 4 feature that's been around since the platform launched in 2013, but only recently has garnered more attention from the gaming community at large. And that is Remote Play. When PlayStation 4 launched in 2013, Remote Play was only available on two types of devices, Sony's Xperia line of smartphones and tablets starting at Z3 moving up, and the PlayStation Vita system. In recent years, Sony has expanded Remote Play compatibility to work with the PC and Macintosh operating systems and platforms, and earlier this year, expanded it to work with all iOS devices running iOS 12.1 or higher. As of yesterday, Sony Interactive Entertainment has officially announced that Remote Play will be working with all Android devices running Android 5.0 or higher with the help of PlayStation 4 system software update 7.00. On top of that, Sony announced that all Android devices running Android 10 or higher will support DualShock 4 compatibility. In addition, iOS devices that will eventually get iOS 13 will also support the DualShock 4, allowing you to preserve your PlayStation 4 experience regardless of the device you choose to play them on. Now, for those of you who will be running older Android devices or perhaps don't want to pair a DualShock 4 to your smartphone or tablet, you could theoretically play your PlayStation 4 games using just the phone screen. However, there are some problems with that. If you choose to play your games in portrait mode, you have full access to the PlayStation 4 controller's layout, but it's only a small clip of the screen that you actually get to see the gameplay involved. If you move your phone into landscape mode, you can get a wider feel, almost like a real controller. However, your fingers and thumbs are blocking your gameplay. So at least 30% of your gameplay is gonna be covered by your fingers, thumbs, or whatever you try to use to play the games. With both of those things considered, remember, the DualShock 4 is shaped so it's comfortable, so all the buttons are easily accessible for your fingers, thumbs, or whatever. This does not translate well to a two-dimensional screen. Try move, playing a game with the Remote Play app use, and move the analog stick and try pressing a face button and a trigger simultaneously, and you'll find that it's nowhere near as convenient or comfortable or even practical as it is on a DualShock 4 controller. So it is my personal recommendation that if you plan on remote playing games on a tablet or smartphone, get into the habit of taking a DualShock 4 with you. That way when you connect said device to the Wi-Fi networks, you can just pair your DualShock and it will feel like you're playing your PlayStation 4 without your PS4 actually being there. Now, speaking of the Wi-Fi signals, that is gonna play a drastic role in your remote playing experience. Assuming that your speeds are fast enough, your PlayStation 4 system will cap out remote play at 720p, 60 frames a second, regardless of the device you choose to play it on, or if you own a PlayStation 4 Pro system, your remote play signal will max out at 1080p, 60 frames a second. And based on my personal experience, because I have fast Wi-Fi speeds, playing single player games is a dream come true on the go because it doesn't feel like there's any noticeable latency. However, I wouldn't really recommend you try playing games like Call of Duty or Crash Team Racing or anything where competitive, quick responses are required because that's where I can imagine that the latency is really gonna make itself apparent. All of this is fantastic news because this means is that in an era where our devices are able to communicate with each other, regardless of it's, whether it's a smartphone, a tablet, a game console, or a PC, this now means that the gaming business by and large and its industry leaders are now jumping on the bandwagon of being able to bring your games on the go with you using devices you already have without having to buy additional hardware. Google Stadia is gonna allow you to bring AAA games on the go regardless of what device it is, but it's a subscription-based service and you don't own any of the games or the hardware required to play them, except for maybe the controller. Project X Cloud is actually gonna be a blend of Sony and Google's approach, where you can actually play your games remotely using a device, or you can stream them from your Xbox One or Project Scarlet system that way. The PlayStation 4's approach allows you to still own the hardware and your games, whether it be digitally or physically, and just stream them to a Vita, a PC, or a compatible smart device. It's brilliant. And with the help of DualShock 4 compatibility now being rolled out across most Android and iOS-based devices, it really preserves the PlayStation 4 experience. The big thing is whether or not your Wi-Fi can handle the remote play streaming service. And with all of that being said, I would like to hear your personal thoughts on remote play. Have you tried it on a smartphone, tablet, or even a PlayStation Vita? Let me know your thoughts and what your experience has been so far down below in the comments section. I can only speak for myself when I say that it is nothing short of fantastic because I don't have to lug a PlayStation 4 system with me whenever I wanna play my games and I'm out and about. So with all that being said, I love to hear your thoughts down there in the comments section. And as always, I will see you in the next video. But until then, take care.